everybody and welcome to my second floss tube recording. This is a podcast called Breaks for Stitches and my name is Patty. I'm coming to you from the most easterly point in North America in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada. I am here after many weeks and I'm sorry about that. It has been an incredibly busy fall but I'm back and I wanted to show you some of the things that I've been working on. The first thing I wanted to show you was a finished object, and we'll see if I can get this up in the camera without everything falling apart. So this is my blackbird singing in the dead of night, a tiny modernist pattern. And I was working on this the last time. Let's, I'm just gonna put it a little bit closer so you can see the stitching. It's something that I was working on for the last, I showed you my last floss tube video and that I've finished. So as you can see, it's quite priscillified for anybody who watches the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch. Um, there, I've got it, it's magnetized onto this old tray that I found at the um, Valley Village, which is a thrift store here in Canada. I've got some different kinds of flowers and accoutrements that I've got glued on, and as well as some uh, ribbon, and I've put it on homespun on the back. And then I have it just hung from this uh, window that I found at Michael's. So I think it turned out really well, and I'm really happy with it. I'm just going to put it over here. So once I finished that project, I started working on another one. This is a pattern from, I know who it's from, I can't remember, the Willy U, which is a Etsy shop. And so I'll put that information at the bottom of the screen. This particular uh, pattern is called Silent Night. And it is a gorgeous little Christmas ornament. And I think, I, I can't remember if I showed this to you before, but I had started this on a linen, and it was on this linen here. And this linen, though really pretty, is a really, really open, if you can see that, it's a really, really open weave. And I was finding it very frustrating to stitch on. So I then switched over to 28 count Monaco um, that I had tea and coffee dyed. And I've got this much done of the pattern now. So I think that's turning out really well. It's really cute. And I'm just using a little scrap, as you can see, a little scrap of fabric. And I think that's going to stitch up into a cute little ornament. So that's a couple of the things that, or that's one of the things that I've been cross-stitching. I have to admit, I have been doing more knitting than cross-stitching over the past few weeks. I also host a knitting podcast under four boys and an NL girl if you're interested in knitting and other crafts that I'm involved in. Um, I've try, I'm trying to keep my cross-stitch separate from my knitting and other crafts podcast by doing a floss tube here this morning. So I wanted to show you some of the other things that I have got in haul that I've purchased over the past little while. Haul is fairly extensive. <laughs> so uh, for anybody who knows Teresa, the kitten stitcher, I have, I have made a couple purchases from Teresa over the past few months, and I wanted to show off some of the things that I purchased. So one of the things I got, this was a kit that she had out in the summer. It's a sampler done by S. Ward called a little rag. Hopefully you can see that. And it's considered a ragamuffin sampler. I'm learning so much from Teresa about what to, um, what different samplers and such are all about. So if you haven't checked out the Kitten Stitcher podcast or Floss Tube, then please go over and have a look. This kit came in a kit, so Teresa, when you order from her, always includes a little thank you um, skein of embroidery floss. This one's an Anchor. 8581. This was a kit, so it came with the fabric and the silk. And I haven't worked in silk before, so I'm really excited about getting started on this. So that it came with two skeins of silk and the fabric to make this sampler. So I'm excited. I probably won't start it until after Christmas. It'll probably be a nice winter project. I made another order with Teresa. And I wanted to get some of her gorgeous, she hand dyes fabric. And of course, here's my little thank you floss. This one's a 382 in Anchor. Teresa loves Anchor embroidery floss. And I haven't used a whole, uh, it's not true. I used Anchor back in the 80s and I didn't like it. So I'm excited to try it again and see if um, I like the quality of the embroidery floss. I trust Teresa's opinion extensively. So I'm sure that I'm going to enjoy it now. So this is a 14 count Bethlehem fabric that uh, Teresa dyed herself and hopefully you're going to be able to see that see the different colors she calls it kind of a grungy grungy dye 
it's just gorgeous. I love these, the little staining that is happening in there. And I think it goes very well with something else that I purchased from Teresa, which was, and everybody has this, I'm pretty sure, it's uh, Home for the Holidays by Blackbird Designs. And I know a lot of people are stitching the particular, one of the patterns that I'm about to show you. This over so you can't see the chart. So this is the Tis the Season chart. And it is stitched in French, and I will keep mine with French. So it's C'est la saison pour être joyeux. So it's the season to be jolly. Tis the season. And I'm looking for it. So I can't, it's difficult for me to, oh, there we go. There's a close up of the bird. And like I said, everybody is stitching this, so I'm sure you have seen this before. But there's several other patterns in here I'm really keen to stitch. And one of them is this little, one of them is this gorgeous Christmas garden sampler. I think that's just stunning. And the other one is a tiny box. It's apparently a paper mache box that's been painted and stained. And then there's a little pin cushion. Let's put in, I'm really keen to give this a try. It's a small pattern, so it shouldn't take very long. And I really want to try the finish in that box. I think that would be, hopefully you can see that well. I think that will be a really cute finish to, to try. But there's so many, there's also these painted gift boxes. So you can see those. So they're really cute. So I'm looking forward to giving that, that a try. The uh, last thing that I got from Teresa, the last time that I ordered, was this, and these were um, books that are brand new that Teresa got in. They're out of, I don't know if they're out of print or hard to get. Anyway, this one is called Tend in the Garden. It's a blooming bouquet of quilts, and this is as well by the ladies at Blackbird Designs. And I'm a quilter, so I really wanted to get this book. But the other reason I wanted to get the book, this particular book is because it has a cross-stitch pattern in it that I think is stunning. Let's see if I can... See, I should have had the, it marked. So, it is this sampler right there. Hopefully you can see that. I think the colors are gorgeous. Everything about that I love. So I want to stitch that. I think that's just gorgeous. It's called My Grandmother's Garden, designed by Alma Allen, stitched by Pat Ryan. So that is just beautiful. So I plan on uh, stitching that in here. But there's also, there's uh, I rug hook and there's some rug hooking. Uh, there's a, at least one, if not two, rug hooking patterns in here. Here's one. Right there. And then there's um, a little bit of rug hooking down here on the front as well. So I think those are really cute. Yeah, uh, I shop, I do a lot of my online shopping, well, I do a lot of my cross stitch shopping. We don't have a whole lot of cross stitch options here in the province. So, one of the places that I shop at is Traditional Stitches, which is a bricks and mortar shop in Calgary, Alberta, which is quite a ways from where I live. Uh, but they also have a lovely online shop. And this is 28 count in the color Veld, and it's picture this plus. And I thought this was a beautiful autumnal kind of, is it a linen? That's cashel. Cashel linen. So I thought that would be beautiful for a some kind of Halloween cross stitch. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna put on that yet, but that's one, and I'm folding that totally wrong. <laughs> and then the other one I got is something that I've seen a couple of finishes for in magazines. So I, I'm not, I don't have the exact patterns here to show you, but this is a 20 out count straw natural gingham by Weeks Dye Works, and it is a linen. And it's got this beautiful gingham pattern on it that I think is just lovely. So lots of plans for the future. I can't wait. Something else that I picked out. I have I have a cro just cross stitch um, just cross stitch magazine subscription. Just taking the label off, so I got a little bit of a rip. So this is the 2018 Christmas ornament book. And if you haven't received this or you don't get the um, the subscription. This is a great, even if you don't get the subscription, this has some great patterns in it. Let me find a couple that I really like without showing you the actual charts. Let's see here. So here's some of the patterns. 
they're really gorgeous and they're broke up broken up into uh sections so they have so this would be more this is called the holly jolly holiday section and there's a primitive more of a classic christmas um classic christmas ornaments so that's a wealth of opportunity for me over the next year um another one that i had purchased from i can't remember i'll put on the screen where i got this uh so that I can put uh, let you know I know I got this with a pattern and I think it was from needle case goodies on Etsy but anyway I'll put the information on the screen so this is the punch needle and primitive stitcher magazine and I know it's Na Nancy is the name of the lady hi Nancy uh, it's the name of the lady that I deal with for this but I can't remember the name of her shop, so I, like I said, I'll put that on the screen. But this has some beautiful cross stitches in it. Beautiful cross stitch patterns. And any of the punch needle patterns could easily be converted to cross stitch patterns as well if you wanted. But this has, I love the Halloween uh, finishes. And one of the reasons I want to get this particular book is that the Twisted Stitcher of Anna Pfeiffer has a design there's a finish in here that i was really interested in that's one on this candlestick so i was interested in seeing how to do that finish so it's another reason why i wanted this book but there's there's just so many patterns in here that i want to do this beautiful one with the crows or the blackbirds so another great resource i watched the floss tube the Country Stitchers, hi ladies, and one of the books that they have recommended that I didn't have that I thought would be nice for my cross stitch library was called The Cross Stitchers Bible, and this is a great little book. It does have patterns in it, but I have to admit I mainly got it for any suggestions that it had in terms of different cross stitch specialty stitches and just little, I find that I'm learning so much from Foss Tube about cross stitching that I didn't know before, and well obviously if I'm learning it, I didn't know it before, I'm really looking at I guess some background information on cross stitch and samplers and such I'm just there's so much information available now that wasn't available in the late 80s when I started cross stitching and then I took a quite a number of year hiatus in between and I've gotten back to it recently um, I think things getting suggestions like this of things that I could add to my reference library is just wonderful so this is it's um, I got this on Amazon it's the new cross stitches bible by jane greenoff and i'll put the information on the screen and this is this is a great book it's got uh, specialty stitches it's got some patterns in it it explains differences between linen and even weave and well at least it explains some uh some unusual threads that you can use when you're stitching and how to use them and that kind of thing so it's just a great resource book that's all for me today i wanted to drop by with a just a quick video so that I could let you know that I'm still interested in doing floss tube videos and that I missed you and that hopefully I can get another video out shortly. I am going to be away. I'm leaving on Wednesday. So this is Monday, October 15th. I'm leaving on Wednesday the 17th to go to Spain for the week. I'm going to be in Madrid and the area around Madrid for a week traveling. I'm very excited about that. So it's likely that my next video will be in another week and a half or so. I am going to be doing some cross stitching when I'm gone and bringing some, I packed my cross stitch and my knitting projects before I packed anything else in my suitcase. So I'm all ready for to do some cross stitching when I'm away. And I hope I get some time to do it because I am going to visit um, Spain. I'm also visiting a friend of mine. And I'm looking at doing some rest and relaxation when I'm there as well because it has been an incredibly busy fall and I need a little bit of quiet, serene time as well. So hopefully I can do that surrounded by some of the gorgeous architecture and landscape that's in Madrid. So take care. I hope you get some time for some great stitchy goodness this week and next week and I will chat again with you soon. Bye-bye.